Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about facing setbacks as an artist. I started thinking about this because I faced kind of a big setback um, earlier this year. And um, that is, I'm sure some of you know and some of you may not know, but I had started doing some regular illustration for the magazine Real Simple and I was loving it and it was a, a great client and a great, um, a monthly assignment and yeah it was a something that I was really excited about and um, only four months after I started there was a lot of turnover at the magazine um, including a new editor new art director tons of the uh, editorial staff and the people who make decisions about what goes into the magazine um, were let go and new people replaced them so long story short the my monthly assignment ended up getting canceled um, actually not just canceled they let me go and gave it to somebody else um, and I don't really know why I don't know if it was because they didn't like the style and wanted to go in a different direction or it's really possible that the art director had a uh, an existing relationship with the illustrator that they decided to go with instead. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of reasons and um, and I asked but I wasn't really told why. So um, that was a real bummer and it um, it definitely was, uh, it definitely felt like a setback because it was the first, um, well not the first regular client that I've had but I guess the first regular client that I've had that I was like super excited about and really enjoying and it just seemed like it was totally out of the blue that um, that they ended up going with somebody else instead after they had been working with me. So um, yeah, and that made me start thinking about setbacks in general and I feel like there's kind of two different kinds. There's more external setbacks, things that come from outside of your control that you can't really do anything about and then uh, internal setbacks, maybe like feeling demotivated or confused or overwhelmed, those sorts of things. So um, uh, obviously the, the real simple issue um, that's an external setback because it was something that was totally out of my control and uh, was kind of a curveball. And um, and I started reflecting on how I dealt with that and how I how I typically deal with those kinds of setbacks, things that are out of my control. And um, and I just wanted to share a little bit about that. So anyway, um, what I think, <laughs> what I like to do initially. Um, it, when, when I face an external setback is to just ignore it and keep moving on because for me that minimizes the importance of it and it makes it so that I don't just immediately get bogged down and sucked down into it feeling bad for myself or um, feeling sorry for myself, whatever. Um, but that's just an initial response and I feel like after I have kind of kept moving after a couple of days maybe then I let myself start reflecting more and purposeful of course I'll think about it you know I can't help thinking about it but I really try to do my best initially to not dwell on it too much and then after a little time has passed I will reflect and think and see um, what my feelings are about it both the positive feelings and the negative feelings about the whole about the experience as a whole not just the setback so with real simple i wanted to think about like all right well what were the good things from this what did i um what did i learn what did i take away um what connections did i make so um yeah having a time for reflection both positive and negative and then ultimately when facing external setbacks for me it's really important to be able to settle on a narrative that uh, that i do have some control over so uh, even though i didn't control the actual setback and i uh, it was something that felt like it happened to me um, it's important to for me to feel like i can sort of reclaim the narrative and say um, all right, well, you know, even though this happened, there are these good things that I took away from it. And, um, yes, this was a bummer, but I'm going to learn, uh, I'm going to learn from it. So for this example, um, the art director that I did end up, that I worked with uh, initially was, uh, really great. And I loved working with her and 
um, I was able to send her a thank you note and just express that. And she felt the same and said that she was going to um, br- keep bringing up my name for uh, the place that she's working at now and for her future positions um, and that she really wanted to work with me again at some point. So that was really positive and it also felt positive to have done a regular assignment for a magazine and to just know that that's something I can do and that that's something I can handle. And um, and I also received a lot of positive feedback for the work uh, while I was doing it. So um, yeah, so those are all good things. I'm trying to think, oh, and then also just um, this is really basic, but financially it was great. Even though it didn't keep going, it was great to have those four months. So um, yeah, and then also for my portfolio. So even though, again, it didn't keep going, I'm able to put that work in my portfolio and it was a significant amount of work that I did in those four months. So uh, yeah, so there were lots of positive things, even though it was a bummer that it got cut short. So uh, so for me, it's important to end, I guess, end my time of reflection on it and end um, uh, to approach processing that setback with with that kind of final positive say, I guess. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of my initial midpoint and final responses to facing external setbacks. And because I was thinking about, uh, because I was thinking about setbacks, I started thinking about more internal setbacks as well. And as I mentioned, I, I think those are just for me, sort of general feelings of being overwhelmed, Um, of feeling maybe inadequate or having some imposter syndrome Um, and uh, whether it's for uh, like a specific reason like oh um, I don't have enough of this kind of work in my portfolio or if it's like more general just feeling like I don't have the skills that I need to make the kind of work that I want Um, yeah all of those internal factors um, can play into that and for me that makes uh, internal setbacks a a lot harder because a lot harder to deal with and work through because they're so subjective so uh with external with external setbacks it's easier in some ways even though it's out of my control it's easier or completely out of my control it's easier to sort of reclaim that and work through and and look at the the positive things that came from it but when i'm just really feeling in a rut or really feeling um overwhelmed or down or um just disappointed in myself as an artist, whatever. Um, that's a lot harder to work through. So um, again, I took some time to think about how I do work through that and kind of what my approach is. Um, and I think it has some similarities with how I approach external setbacks, but it also has some significant differences. And I think um, the the first is just how I approach it initially. And the, that first step for me is just to realize and accept that this is how I'm feeling. And that's gotten easier to do as I've gotten older and as I've worked more, just because it is, it's almost like, it's almost like seasons and I can just, I can tell when a time where I'm going to feel frustrated and overwhelmed for a while, like I can tell that that's coming and it's starting and I've been through a number of them before. Um, it happens regularly. So it's gotten easier to just say, oh, okay, this is what this is. I recognize it now. And, um, and even though it is a bummer to just say, okay, this is what's happening. This is where I'm at. This is how I'm feeling. And uh, at that point, I also try to discern whether it's something that I can um, just push through and work through, which is often how I approach it, or if it's enough of a setback, if I'm feeling overwhelmed and sort of beleaguered enough, then I will actually take some time to step back and try to redirect my energy somewhere else whether that's taking a few hours away or a few days away or even just saying you know what this is something i need to set aside for a couple of months or a season and then come back to it later um having that initial moment of of discernment of whether it's a a small emotional hiccup or a big emotional bump and deciding um yeah whether to push through or whether to to um give myself some space and step back and uh, after some time has passed and I've decided what my approach is going to be, um, I usually do, just like I do with the external setback, try to take some time to reflect. And um, for internal setback, I'm not so much looking at um, 
what can I learn from this or what happened here? It's, it's more just a question of wondering what's at the root and why I'm feeling that way. And um, more often than not, as long as I wait a little while and give myself some space to have that reflection, I can figure out something. And sometimes it is, um, it's so petty and silly, I almost feel embarrassed to mention it. But honestly, sometimes it can be that I, I received, you know, some, um, a bunch of positive feedback from a client, but there's like this one little thing that was negative and that's just kind of lodged itself in my brain and I'm fixated on it. Or um, one person left a not very nice comment and I've just been mulling it over for days. Or, you know, uh, could be that I've been working on a piece and there's just an element of it that doesn't quite feel right to me and I'm feeling stuck. Um, yeah, so it, it can be this a really little kind of seed that gets stuck in there and then that just grows and grows and grows. So for me, it is worthwhile taking that time to reflect and think of why am I feeling this way? Because if I can kind of put that into perspective and remind myself, okay, well, so this, this thing that got you started feeling bad about yourself, that was one comment that somebody who doesn't know you and doesn't know the whole context of your story, that's one comment that somebody left left and that's how they feel and that's fine but that doesn't have to certainly doesn't have to define you and it, it probably isn't worth as much importance as you're giving to it so yeah having that time of reflection is really important and as a part of that it, reminding myself that just like all of these other emotional bumps that I faced over the years and these other times that I felt like I was stuck in a rut that this too will pass that this is not permanent and uh, eventually I will not feel this way anymore even if that's how I feel now and ultimately in dealing with internal setbacks uh, depending on how bad it is and how much of a rut I'm in, um, I need to take the time that I need uh, away doing something else, whether it's going for a walk or baking or reading or um, working on a new piece that's in a totally different style. And then once I've had that time away that I feel like I need, doing whatever I can to get myself moving again. Um, taking even if it's like one little tiny step just not letting myself get stuck in that paralysis of analysis and uh, yeah so deciding okay I'm gonna start again and even if I feel like I've taken a step back or multiple steps back or I'm not where I want to be let me just pick that one little thing to, to get started to get going again and um, yeah so uh, this has been just a lot of personal reflection on, on how I deal with setbacks, but um, hopefully there's some stuff in there that's helpful for you. And if you're feeling like you're in a rut or you're facing an external setback, something that's out of your control, um, either way, I hope uh, this was encouraging to you and that you can um, take some time to uh, approach your setbacks and deal with them the way that you need to. And, and ultimately just, um, yeah, I hope you feel encouraged and, and reminded that, uh, that you will get through it and it will pass and, uh, and you'll face more in the future, but you'll get better at facing them. So yeah, that is it. That's all I have to say for this video. So um, I hope everybody has a great day and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.